How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Blue Shifting, and welcome back to Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, Chapter 2, or second chapter, I guess, technically, but you know what I'm talking about. We're here again. So, last time we were able to find everyone. So, someone told me in the comments that her name isn't Rena or Renee, it's Ren. So, it's just got an extra E on the end for flavor purposes. I'll try to remember Ren, but. The thing is, like, I have, uh, like, a grandmother who passed, sadly, but her name was Renee. So, like, it, it sucks because she spelled it the same way that it was Renee. It's just, okay, whatever. So, Ren. Ren. I like her. She's great. Uh, missing exhibits. We got the museum to go to. Threat letter case that so we're gonna do. Because we did Lost Chapter 1, uh, Last Girl 1 and 2. Um, which, are, like, it doesn't look like they're, yeah, they're in progress still. So, not really ended, but put on hold for now, that we're uh, kind of doing as a side project in addition to working with the Threat Letters case, which is going on, and then of course the missing exhibit, which, if, jo if Johnny doesn't have something to do with that, I don't know what's going on. Also, at the end of the last episode, I took a little time for myself, so not only we got our team, but I got our team a little kitted out, so I assigned equipment as per was making sense, and then I went and did some Orbment stuff. So. Zin is interesting because he is a earth element base, so he has to have earth element. So I go I went ahead, upgraded his slot, and gave him the septium vein. Which is interesting because that was giving Estelle access to some of her bigger powers. But it gives him access to almost all of those same powers, and while he's probably not going to be using a lot of his, like, magic, because he's just so freaking strong, I still think it's good to give him the option of a titanic roar, but, I mean, considering... He can only cast it like once or twice at most in combat. That's rough. So I might want to figure that out. But it just made sense given the fact that he has that. And then we also got this defense three recently. So put those two together and it was able to get us all of this with just a little bit of yellow boosting. So really powerful spell access. Just um, not much else I can do with that. So I might switch that over. We'll see. Oliver, still pretty much the same. I think I was able to juice him up a bit to give him this phantom pain. So it de decreases strength across like a medium area, which is pretty good. We got the silent cross, of course, which we got before, but phantom pain is like a little bit of a higher step up based on what we had access to before. Um, he also has this firebolt EX, which is pretty sweet, just because like it's nice having that option. Uh, but otherwise, there's nothing really of like specific note that I gave him. But again, he's he's a he's a caster, but not one of our bigger casters as of yet. He's really solid though. He's got the single line, so he can be really, really strong. But trying to play into his strengths at this moment just doesn't work. We can only specialize so much at this minute. Chloe. Chloe is uh Chloe's just amazing. Um, I leaned a bit more into her like she's got just wind and water at this point. So she has all her normal stuff. Kira. She's got Diamond Dust, which is awesome. We finally got that uh, for sure. Um, I really, we're like an inch away from giving her the uh, big ice spell. Let's take a quick look at that, shall we? All right, so not this big, big one, but Diamond Dust. Okay, so yeah, we're pretty close. Like we got the Diamond Dust, which is really good. I want to get the Cocutus. We don't have access to that yet, but we got 19 uh, blue strength, so. We're getting really high. Um, Athelus, was I able to give that to her? I don't think so, because she needs an Earth combo. Um, but that was a revive spell, so I definitely want to get that eventually. But again, with Zin here, it just doesn't make sense to put um, stone or Earth magic on anyone else at the minute. And then, of course, Estelle. I still have her with some pretty strong Earth magic, but I, I swung her a bit on the fire side, so we gave her some of the fire aspects. Um, and I think like the big one that's like is this one the spatial flare because it, it's the wi it's wind plus uh, fire so uh, again uh, Estelle's problem is that she's a fantastic caster but she can uh, she has two different lines which makes her versatile but doesn't make her powerful again I really am excited for end game content when I've got like all the orbs I could want and just what craziness I can do but for now that's all we got okay. So enough of that, we're gonna start going around and talking to people. We're gonna go talk to the embassies, we're gonna talk to the capital, we're gonna talk to... Uh, was it, do we also go to the castle? The, um... The liberal news. So we go to the castle, the embassies, and the liberal news. Plus, just checking around other places as well. 
And then we know Agat's doing his own site investigation, checking out a few other sites. And um, Ren and Tita are going to be out and about exploring. I got a lot of NPCs to talk to today. I'm going to be doing a lot of the voice work for them. I'll probably try and cut out the boring ones, but it can be difficult to know which is what, which. And so I expect this is going to be a much slower, more character driven episode rather than combat driven which is perfectly reasonable so in fact i think we're gonna immediately i i think i might rest and just uh get all of our stats up just in case uh and then i'm immediately just gonna go and probably head to the district with the embassies and with the museum because i can just get yeah, three birds with one stone essentially so uh, that's all good let's get going oh <laughs> i've had a new ride to replace my old one recently I've been using the same rod since I started fishing, so I thought it was about time for an upgrade. Now then, what do I do with my old rod? My husband only uses new top at class rods, you see, so I had to keep it. You, you fish, don't you? Huh? Well, some... H how does she know? That's actually a good point. Like, how do you look at someone and just be like, you fish? Maybe, well, I mean, she's got to be carrying a fishing pole, but you know, inventory management and bags of holding are a thing, apparently. Well then, allow me to offer you this. A bamboo fishing rod. Wow, thank you. Make sure to catch plenty of fish with it. Yeah, new fishing pole. You guys mentioned that there's someone in the north um, to, to talk to you about it, and I'm glad I didn't miss them. So awesome. I'm excited to give that a whirl. Now, we're not going to go to the castle yet. I wanna, I'm probably going to end up doing that last. Uh, it's an east block from the Calvert Embassy, so the city's so big it's easy to get lost or pick up the map in the department store. Speaking of department store, we know Tita and, um, and Ren are somewhere around here. You seem to be off yawning an awful lot while I pull my heart out to you. If you're afraid, suffer with me. <sighs> Good weather today again. He's just not paying attention, even though his friend was, like, borderline. Oh, there they are! Oh, Estelle. Tita, take care of Ren. Yeah, leave it to me. I got lots of places I want to go with Ren. Just don't get lost. Okay, good luck with your work. Ren, so this is where you were. Hi, Estelle. Hey, what stuffed animal do you like? Mm, I think the rabbit's pretty cute. Really? What a coincidence. I think that bunny's the cutest too. Looking at the stuffed animals reminds me of Annalise. I wonder what she's doing right now. Annalise? She's a bracer like me, but she's a lady who loves stuffed animals. I'm sure you two get along, Ren. Well, I get to meet this lady. She's out of the capital on work right now, but you might meet her at some point. When at some point? Tomorrow? The day after? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Aww. <laughs> Ren, I love you, and you're also kind of like a handful. So, yeah. Oh, uh, I, I visited all these stores, but I don't think there's anything I really need. I mean, it's pretty much the same old, same old, and I got the last, like, liber- I got the news that was last here, so we already read that. Anti-cold helmet, hmm. Prevents freeze, could be good. Yeah, we already got this. Next, and then I also came here and got those chains to help with that fight that I was having a trouble with. Yeah, right here. So. Go to talk about good pots and everything. Okay, to the museum now. It's about time we go back there. Oh, this is the park. Oh, who are you? This is my spot. Don't take my spot. This is my and Joshua special place. Just visiting tourist spots doesn't make a trip. Spending time without a plan is like a, a, is a, a, like this is also a wonderful memory. That's true. This weird old lady's been eyeing me for a while now. I wonder why. Is there something on my face? What weird old lady? Hmm. Talking about the lady who's sitting in the park? Black haired soldier came out of the embassy just a bit ago. His expression was impassive, but he was so cool. Hmm. Black haired. Amazing Empire Reader Sign a non aggression pact. Oh, ho, oh, what a kind of magic arc we used. It's like, am I misremembering and the museum is in the North District? No, it's right here. So, Johnny, good old little Johnny, was sitting right out here. So, let's figure out what's going on in here. Lately, even the museum's head of, cur of the curator seems to be very busy. I hope they don't fall ill. Oh, here he is. I had over the th over the thing to the museum director. Apparently, they're looking into whether or not something the museum can hold on to, so I'm, uh, I'm having to wander while they check it out. 
Hello there. How can I help you? Better yet, how can we help you? We're with the Bracers Guild, sir. Oh, excellent. I was hoping someone would come soon. That's nice, no time getting down to business. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, what was Dylan? About that. Do you notice anything off here? Off? This is the airship gallery, right? Hey, now, you just mentioned it. Something seems to be missing. You're right, Estelle. There was a portrait of the Araceli on the walls, I recall. Ooh, that's bad. Because if it's a portrait of a military vessel, someone might be using it to try and glean insights about how it works and could even use it as a way to try and strike it. Now that you mention it, Chloe, I do remember something like that being here. How could I forget? I saw the portrait myself while touring the capital. Yes, we know why you call the, us now. The portrait of our silly was stolen, wasn't it? Precisely that. Uh, it was there this morning, but around noon or so, I noticed that it was gone. The card was on the wall in its place. Oh, no. Not again. Oh, beauteous pre uh, princess and her loyal companions. The image of a proud white falcon has fallen into my hands. Should you seek it, then answer my challenge. The first key is in the residence of the aged general. Search the onlooker of search the onlooker of time. <sighs> Him again. <laughs> Our rivalry burns brighter still. Yeah, sounds like the fan of Thief Blue Block, all right. You guys told me about him, but I thought you were exaggerating. You already know who the criminal is. No, it's what I call reassuring. I have every confidence that you'll crack this case. Yeah, we won't let you down. We'll be back before you know it. Alright, let's do this first. Let's get it over with. Okay. Residence of the Age General and Onlooker of Time. Age General... Does General Morgan have a home in town? Onlooker of Time sounds like a clock. Like a grandfather clock. Alright. General Morgan have a home. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be a tough and time consuming. Cause I wanna do this now before we do anything else. A foul coup de tar was unfortunate, but thankfully nothing awful came of it. Hope the non-aggression packed signing ceremony ends on a high note. I'm sure we'll be alright now that Brigadier General Bright's back in the Royal Army. There's a clock here. Hmm. Ah! No! What? I'm stuck! Ah! No! Game! You can't be serious. You can't be serious. Uh-oh. Alright, well, we're gonna have to save, reload, and see if that gets us unstuck. Or if I have to redo everything. Oh, that's just awful. No! Oh, man! Estelle, why? I'm just trying to look for clues. Gosh darn it. Alright. Well, I'll have to fast track everything we just did. So, I'll be right back. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Since most of it was kind of faffing around anyway, I just need to kind of continue on the hunt. See if Morgan's got a house somewhere in the area. It would make sense if he does. Could be in the palace, too, now I think about it. That could make it a bit challenging, but still, gotta try. And then the clue again, like, that's the other thing, so, like, not only do I have to find, like, a house that I think is supposed to be, like, residence of the age general, but the onlooker of time. Onlooker of time just sounds like a clock. Oh, I forgot the rod. I've got it, didn't, I didn't accidentally pass this up. General Morgan's residence! Okay! Yes! Well, my husband's dislike of the Bracers. He certainly speaks of them quite a lot recently. It's perhaps it's Cassius's influence, as shocking as that would be. There's a clock there. The good sir's changed a bit. Maybe it's my imagination, but seems to smile more than I'm accustomed to seeing. Alright, well... Wait. Okay. 
Kind of disturbing to think about, though, that Bublox snuck into the general's house. I met a girl in a white dress a little while ago at the cathedral. I wish I could have played with her. Hmm. Oh, that could be. Could that was? Is it? Could that be Ren? Ha ha. Hmm. So the eighth general is probably General Morgan. In that case, this is the onlooker of time. I'd say it's likely. We'll need to check inside. Estelle asked and received permission from the owners of the house to investigate the clock. It's disturbing! He's hanging out in their house! Upon inspection, they found a card stuck to the back. The second key in the city is, is in the city. Seek the symbol perched upon the ground. As we thought. My... To think someone like that was in our house! Well, this guy's in the tech to harm people who aren't involved. He has a weird plan, so don't worry. Besides, best to close up tight at night, just in case something, there's any more mischief, though. Yes, of course. Yes, we'll be careful. Alright, shall we continue? Alright, let me double check that again. So, in the city, the symbol perched on the ground. I think in the entrance, there's like the city of like the, the city seal on the ground at the entrance. I'm guessing that's what it'll be. So, white dress in cathedral. I think nothing looks different here. Yeah, I'm guessing that that, girl, that, that kid was talking about Ren. During the coup d'etat, General Morgan's granddaughter, uh, Rayan was kidnapped. Taking a little girl as a hostage? Those intelligence division guys sure are a bunch of cowards. Yeah, I was actually going to say that. I didn't mention this before, but my theory, actually, uh, I have a theory about what's going on. I think it is the leftover of the intelligence division that's doing the uh, the threatening letters. Because, okay, here's, here's my thinking, right? The philosophy behind um, the colonel's actions was that liberal never should be in a position where they are going to be taken advantage of again. He didn't think peace between the nations was good enough. He wanted Liberal to be a powerhouse of military might, to be able to stand up against like the advancement of the neighboring like nations, because he was terrified that someday they would just get the same technology as we have and then take us over. Genuine, I could kind of get that. So my theory was that um, is that she might be continuing that journey because, um, like I said, Ouroboros, I doubt cares about this, you know, peace treaty. They don't operate. We're concerning the boundaries of nations. They probably see, could care less. Like they have their own plans, and they just want to use the, the powers that be to their advantage. And whether they have a brokered peace between themselves or not, really probably doesn't matter to them. So I don't think that Ouroboros is actually involved. I think this is like the intelligence division because I think they want to sabotage this peace treaty because they feel it will weaken liberal, and it'll go against what the colonel wanted. And you know they're essentially a cult at this point. So there you go. And then uh, I also was thinking that the idea might be they have a target in mind, and it's one of the places that was threatened. But the problem is, is that the target is likely a place that is most often, like, has active guard patrols. So the castle, the, one of the embassies, or both the embassies, they have active patrols, they have active guards, and they have active watches. So what do you do? Well, you could do a kind of diversion plan. When you send out threats across, like, all over the city, and you force, like, the military that's already kind of being strained as it is with the, the t upcoming talks to spread out their forces and to cover a lot more territory, making it so that when you attack, yeah, they might be on guard for an attack, but also they'll be understaffed and, like, response time for reinforcements will be really minimal. So if you have guerrilla tactics with, like, smoke bombs and, and like, dart guns and, you know, exceptional, exceptional skill, like a small but very uh, well-equipped and well-trained group, that is a much more advantageous situation because you can incapacitate the few people that are there that you can observe, take what you need, and get out before reinforcements can arrive. So that's what I think their plan is. Anyway, enough of that. Let's move around. So, oh, yep, here we go. Scree! The symbol perched on the ground, huh? This white falcon symbolizes this symbol, some, something you suspect to me. This bird is the symbol of liberal, so it would stand out. Let's have a look. There's a card stuck to the base of the iron fence. Third keys in the foreign ma uh, the foreign mains examine the will of the blue knight. 
The foreign man, me mezzanine or mans, whatever that is. All right, we got it. But what does the black blue knight mean? Is he talking about the royal guard? They do certainly wear blue uniforms. Mm, I think not. It says the foreign mans. I don't think the royal guard makes sense. More than anything else, it would be beautiful. So we should try. We should try for something else. Is that right? Well, it's coming from someone similar, so I guess maybe I should listen to the warning here. Alright, so... The Foreign Mons and Will of the Blue Knight. Will of the Blue Knight. Well, Foreign Mons would indicate to me one of the embassies, because that's the only foreign territory that is around here. I'm not sure what the Mons is. Hang on. Let me look that word up, actually, because I really want to know. M-A-N-S-E. I don't think I've ever heard that before. And that's, like, I mean, I'm not super intelligent by any means, but I do read a lot, and so I come across a lot of words that I don't recognize right off the bat. Mons. A house occupied by a minister of the, uh, the Presbytery Church. Of a Presbytery Church. Okay. A foreign Mons. A foreign minister's home. Maybe that just means the church in general? And the Blue Knight. Okay. Well, let's go to the cathedral again. Maybe that is what the clue is referring to. Because if, if it's, uh, like, where the minister lives, and the Blue Knight... Blue Knight could be a lot. Welcome, Mr. Traveling Priest, Father Kevin. I heard from the Archbishop that the work of the Traveling Priest is quite difficult. But judging from Father Kevin's demeanor, I don't get that impression at all. Perhaps it's easier than I thought. So Kevin is around, doing who knows what. Based on how often they're dropping hints of him, but how, how, how little we've actually seen him, I wonder if he's going to be like one of the last companions we get. Well, I think I'm genuinely stumped now. Will of the Blue Knight. Foreign Mons. It looks, so it has a similar definition. A personal ho house or home. A foreign home. Will of the Blue Knight. Part of me is wondering if I might need to look this one up just because I feel like I'm missing something that I really don't know enough to be able to put together. I mean, it might be inside one of the uh, embassies, so maybe we just get that going. Okay. I did it just a quick check. I didn't even read the whole thing, but it is an embassy. I'm not sure which one. So we should probably just do our embassy visits now. Uh, yeah, I'll start here. Oh, Oliver. Hmm. You continue to play your role, Real Bergen. I would like to enter. May we pass? I can't say no to you, but uh, who's with you? Oh, we're from the Bracers Guild. We'd like to ask the ambassador a few things, if that's okay. We thought we'd try having Oliver introduce us. Oh, okay. Well, I can certainly let you in, but... Lord Ambassador uh, Carnig uh, Cranigan and Mayor Vander are out of the moment, you see. Oh, a pity. What shall we do, Estelle? If we can wait inside. We could, but we're kind of burning daylight here, so I'd like to visit some other places while we wait. We could visit the Calvert Embassy first, then? It's just across the plaza from here. Yes, getting back here won't take long after meeting Elsa. That's decided then. We'll be back later, sir. Let the Major know you were here. See you later. Okay, guess we're going to the other one. Makes sense. Alright, hopefully this Blue Knight will be in the Calvert Embassy then. Hey, how's it go? How goes? Huh? Zin! Holy crap! Wasted time in Liberalville again? Haha, <laughs> something like that. No, I'd say, I, I thought I'd say hello to Elsa. I'd have some, a little something I need to talk to her about. Is she in? Well, I haven't seen her leave, so I guess she's around. Oh, who's with you? Gotta ask, you know? Policy. Oh, they're helping me with some guild work. I'm going to introduce them to us, Elsa. Huh, well, okay. If they're with you, Zin. I guess I can let them in. Sweet. So, welcome to the Calvard Embassy. Oh, and please keep in mind the Embassy Hall is the Calvard soil. 
Calvard and Liberal are friends, but still keep your nose clean, eh? You heard that, Oliver. And again, my heart is assaulted with arrows. How little trust you have in me. Oh, yes, Oliver. Now, this is the first time us being in here. Ooh, it's actually really nice in here. Ooh, magnificent. Wow, this is the Calvardian Embassy. I didn't expect it to be quite so fancy. And yet it's a bit exotic as well. I really like it. Well, quite a few people who are either farther, uh, from, from even farther east have settled in Calvert, you know? They've had an impact on our culture too. Anyway, Elsa's office is the furthest room on the second floor. Alrighty. Let's explore. Ah, uh, Zin. Hey, I'm back. Might end up borrowing a room, so I'll be in your care if that happens. <laughs> of course. I'll have everything squeaky clean for you. Now these vases are blue. Are you the blue knights? No. So is this the second floor? And then this is the third floor? Or are they doing British style, where this is ground floor and this is the first floor? Oh. Shelf holds the Doll Knight series. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh. I see what you guys said. Okay. My, my, my. Is that hook of a man over there, Zin? I don't even need to see your face, you know? Hey, hey. You're seriously going to judge based on my body size? I thought you were there when we first met. My. Jeez. Okay. Um, books. So someone mentioned that I get the opportunity to read an entire series, but that it's going to be, like, long, and I see what you mean. So I'm probably going to just read it myself and give a kind of an overview of what I think of the story. Because I do love the in-game books, and I've been enjoying reading them with you all. But I feel like reading 16 chapters of a story to you, and I'm guessing another series, is also going to be a problem. Especially because I'm guessing that this is going to have a, a note hidden in it somewhere because of the, the idea of a knight, a blue knight. This is about the doll knight, so it's something. So I'll be back in a while. Oh, okay, we got to chapter 13, I think. There's a card trapped between the pages. The door has already been opened. Join the Dance of the Valorous. Oh, look what I found. Oh, I get it. Guess this is technically considered Republican territory. It's absolutely the foreign mons. And the Black Blue Knight is a character from in the novel, I think. Jeez, he sure is detail-oriented. Anyway, got a feeling this next one's the last of them. Dance of the Valorous. Well, now where could that be? But, we're not done. I gotta finish the story! Oh, it's so good! Oh, so that was in, it was in book 14, not 15, uh, 13. Oh no, or maybe it was in 15. I lost track of it all. Yeah, okay. Alright. That was great. Holy crap, that story's great. So the Blue Knight, essentially it's this idea of a type of like magic or mechanism kind of fused together, kind of like orbital technology, where you could make a mechanical puppet that you could control with your hands like a like a like a puppeteer, but the but the mechanism itself would look and operate in a very human way to the point where most people wouldn't be able to distinguish that it was an artificial being. Um, and so it's like a, a child that was really, really dexterous with his hands and that crafting things was found by a man who'd made a puppet that was a priest that would follow him around. And he and the and this kid learns how to make a knight, that a blue knight, which is the clue that was in the story. And he ends up becoming like a defender of a princess, but he feels overshadowed because everyone looks to the puppet and, exp and like sees that as like like the master and that he's like a servant following this knight when he's actually like the controller of the knight. The princess sees through it. Um, another puppet master called Harlequin with a big demon-like contraption, like a, a contraption of, of war, comes and kidnaps her, and he ends up having to kind of reconcile and confront him. It's really well-crafted story. And, it, and, it, and it's funny because it's like, it might not be, it feels like it's fictional in this world, but like a lot of fiction, it feels so close to reality. Like, it makes me wonder if that could be a real thing in this universe in the future, because that sounds awesome. 
Like being able to have like a mechanicized, like robotic type of ally that you use in combat while you're kind of behind the scenes working something. Like that sounds really fun. I almost hope that that's something in the future. That was a great story. And we got the clue, which like I said, was in here. Uh, an open door and Dance of the Valorous, wh uh, where it is suggesting. Dance of the Valorous. I'm not sure if dance is the keyword there or an open door if it could mean like going into the sewers because that's an open door. Anyway. Oh, you all are... Why, if it isn't Zin. Counselor, a pleasure. All together here, are they your guests? Yes, they're co-workers with the guild. Ah, uh, you hear about the threat letter. It is as you guessed. As a request from the Royal Army. Do you have any ideas? The threat letters like that aren't exactly rare in the Republic. To be honest, I barely paid it any heat at all. True, there are a lot of radical groups in the country. Yes, they always cause trouble when there's issues of immigration comes up. Well, this time at least I can't say anything. Why don't you see what the Ambassador Cochran thinks first? Yes, we'll go about there, there right now. If you'll pardon us. Okay, so he thinks it not credible because he's seen threat letters lie of its sort all the time. Oh, Zin, come to liberal again. Hey, Yakumo, uh, Yakumo. Seems I'll be here for a while again. You seem pretty busy yourself. Oh, of course we are. After all, we're getting the patch signing approaching. Haha, <laughs> sorry, but I won't have time to bother with you for a while. This should be the ambassador's office. Shall we say hello to Elsa? Um, let's come back later. Now that that's giving us a checkpoint gate, maybe we should solve the clue first, just in case. All right, so an opened door, Dance of the Valorous. Dance of the Valorous. Oh. Open door, Dance of the Valors. Dance of the Valors might be the Coliseum. Aha! Huh, it's unlocked! The entrance here should be kept locked as long as there's no show in the martial arts tournament. In which case... Hmm. Seems this is our goal, then. Alright, let's get inside. We gonna have a fight? I don't like the music. So I'm guessing it's going to be in the actual Coliseum room itself. Down there? Probably. Alright, but like, because let's see, what what was the clue exactly? The grand, uh, this has to be it. Um, Dance of the Valorous, like, I'm guessing it's just on the, the stage itself. But, you know, we might as well check around, make sure we're not missing anything. Yeah. It does feel like it's gonna be a fight, huh? The Grand Arena, kinda nostalgic. Feels like we were here just yesterday. Didn't we have like almost this exact team too? <laughs> just standing here as me recalling the admiring roar of the audience. You were invited to the castle after you won the martial arts competition, right Estelle? I wish I could have joined you on the field. <laughs> Thinking about it, I'm still pretty amateurish. But you know, once the whole thing is cleared up, I'd like you to take part. I'd like to take part in the next mar year's martial arts competition. I test my own ability for once. No, that sounds like Cassius's daughter to me. I'd like to join on that auction as too. I uh, don't really feel like I'd have a chance against you, then. Well, then I shall sing from the seats to cheer you on, Estelle. I will serenade my love for you as mightily as I can. Pass! <laughs> oh my gosh, what the fetch did- How did he even bring that in here? Monsters! This feels reminiscent of some old Coliseum game. The setting is certainly apt. It's a pity we lack an audience. Here they come! Alright, what on earth are you? Master Cryon. Monster readily sighted the Evelay region to inhabitants to use water-based arts. Oh no. Maybe I should have gotten frozen-based gear. 
Uh, cry and bit. Young, rare, uh, a rare young monster has not habit of freezing its prey before eating them. Okay. Weaker to fire, and they're gonna freeze us. And I really wish I had gear that was better equipped for that. So that's just great. Cool. Cool, cool. I'm scared. Get him, Sieg! It freezes! I don't like that! Guys, come on. <laughs> yeah, I might need to go and equip some gear, because this is uh, this is bad. I should have saved before I came in here. Oh, that did nothing! Hey, over here! What? You kill him? Okay, it worked on the little ones, that's good. Crap, they can't freeze him. He just resisted it a lot. Get a crit! Get a crit! Oh, yeah! Die! Thank goodness that thing's dead. Oh! Crap! I need the heals in so he can take, take those shots again. Alright, Zen, punch the crap out of it! Actually, yeah, let's just punch the crap out of it. There we go! They messed with the wrong guy. Got it. Fish egg. What, was, what? What was that? It was like a magic trick. What a fabulous display. He is a fitting rival indeed. He's even weirder than I thought he'd be. Well, whatever. Let's check the contents. Yep. Received portrait of the Araceli. There's a card stuck to the bottom of the box. My princess, my rival, my brave bracers. Did you enjoy the show I prepared for your arrival? I did not wish to upset the mood of our main role. It is time for the supporting actors to take their bows. I hope you will look forward to our next chance meeting. Oh, is this the last of his challenges? <laughs> Some chance meeting! I wish he'd cut it out! But there's something curious about it. Main role, supporting actors, what does that mean? Now that you mention it, oh, screw it, let's return to the photo to the archives. There it is. I can't thank you enough, Bracers. Still, why would the Phantom Thief fellow steal the portrait of Araceli? It certainly is lovely, but really nothing more than a simple portrait. It holds little monetary value. Well, he doesn't really care about the value so much as he cares about pulling off a good prank or two. And it's probably our fault that the museum got wrapped up in the latest one. Sorry for putting you through all this. Oh, no need to apologize. It wasn't your doing. If anything, I'm very pleased with how you handled this excellent work. The missing exhibit complete. All right, let's go turn that in real quick and then continue talking to all the ambassadors and all that good stuff. Also should probably heal in case I get attacked again. All right, the missing exhibit. And senior rank, uh, bracer E plus rank. In ingenuity courts. Good work, seems you succeeded your objective safely. If you complete any other tasks, come report again. Anything new? Nope. All right, ingenuity. What on earth is that orb meant? Let me see. Uh. Oh, it's fire. <gasps> it's fire. 
Oh snap! Okay, okay. Let's 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 take a quick peek. Cause Estelle could be close to something fast, like fire powerful. Okay, well, after all that, this is about the best I can do. I'm so close on so many things. Like, I still can't get Chloe any higher on her trail. Ingenuity is fantastic, but it doesn't quite get me, like, uh, so, like, I noticed before, the fire tree seems, oddly capped, like, 10 is the highest you can go, so I got 12 here. And, but I need 8 wind and 8 yellow to be able to make anything else really exciting here. Um, I've got 5 yellow, but no wind. And... When I try to shift things around to get closer to that, it's just, we just don't quite get there, and it, it leaves me with not much. Like, I want to get to Meteor Fall. That'd be just five and three. Five, and if I had five wind and three stone, I could probably do it. And I can get, to get there with Septium Vein with the five stone, at least. But then I have no way of getting to the wind and keeping up my yellow space values, so about the best I can do. It gives me Cyclone Napalm, which is like a, a really strong single target fire instead of the area of effect uh, fires, which I had before, which I think works okay. Zen's essentially at the same state he was before. Um, Oliver, same, and Chloe, the same. So it's, yeah, mostly Estelle, who I changed a little bit and gave ingenuity to. All right, but not great. Still, pretty exciting. I'm happy to have that orbment as an option. Now let's go to the, uh, yeah, let's go talk to the, what's their name? The ambassador, because I feel like we, we, we've, we've passed the point where we're not going to accidentally walk our way out of that mission, which was a fun one to do, I'll admit. All right, to the embassy. All right, let's go talk to her. All right, let me introduce you. Hmm? Yes, come in. Pardon us, Elsa. Why, Zin. Zin Z uh, Vathek. Hello, hello, come in. Last I heard, you'd return to Calvert. What's an old dog like you doing back here in Gransel? Ha, huh, well, let's just say this old dog had a trick or two more to show off. I'll likely be in Liberal for a while. As we expected of an A-rank bracer, I suppose. You never let up, do you? Oh, uh, so, who is this with you? Uh, a pleasure to meet you, ma'am. I'm Estelle Bright of the Bracers Guild. These are our, uh, these are our uh, assistants, Oliver Lyham and Chloe Riddens. A pleasure, Ambassador. It's a pleasure to meet you, Ambassador. The pleasure's mine. I'm Elsa Cochran, the Clalvert Ambassador to Liberal. I get the feeling this is a bit more than a social call, though. I'm afraid so. Estelle and her party asked about the threatening letter the embassy received. Ah, uh, that letter, yes. You're helping the Royal Army investigate the matter, then? Technically, yes. Threats of terrorism aren't exactly something the Guild can ignore either, though. Would you mind helping us out? Well, I suppose we're stuck into the situation after all. What would you like to know? Well, uh, to start with, do you have any idea who would have sent the letter? Like, does anyone in the Republic oppose the signing of the pact, or...? Well, of course. You're looking at one of all, after all. Huh? Elsa, please. Try not to tease the kids too much, yeah? Well, the truth is the truth, Zin. I'm pretty sure I've chewed your ear off about Erebonia enough to let you know what I think, hmm? Well, yes. <laughs> Still, Miss Bright, don't misunderstand me. President, President Rocksmith and Parliament have already approved the pact. My personal feelings won't get in the way of my job. Eh, uh, right. Is there anyone else from Calvert who might oppose the pact? Oh, certainly. There are tiny groups, though. To be honest, there's no real reason to oppose it anyway. No reason. I don't quite follow. It's not worth bothering. The pact doesn't have any practical effect. It's simply agreeing the statement of we shall not rely on violence to solve international problems to negotiate instead. It's more of a declaration than anything, but... It's little more than a promise which can be broken without consequence save the loss of face, no? Precisely. Worst it could do would be to re uh, rally other countries against the aggressor. Now, it's true that relations between Erebonia and Calvert have gotten even worse than, than usual over the past decade. 
So there's some value in establishing Libro as a place where we can negotiate, but again, who'd bother opposing that? Yeah. It doesn't really seem like the thing you'd send a bunch of threatening letters about. Well, Ambassador Cochran, if you don't believe someone from Calvert is the perpetrator, then whom do you suspect? Hmm. Well, my gut, of course, tells me to blame it all on the Erebonians. The Meritalistic Hawk faction, specifically. But frankly, even that has the new engine on the line. They aren't so stupid as to cut off the nose and spit in, and spit in their faces. The new engine? Wait, you mean the one from the Araceli? Yes, an engineering sample will be provided to both Calvard and Erebonia. It happens right after the signing, in fact. Wow! As we expected of Queen Alicia. She holds both Empire and Republic in the palm of her hand. Yes, I admit she's handled this masterfully. The cutting-edge engine is going to birth a whole new generation of airship design. And Alicia is practically handing it out, so long as you sign this agreement and play nice with each other, at least for a while. Even the most testosterone-poised nin ninnies amongst the Erebonian hawks wouldn't want to miss this chance. Yeah, I guess so. Which means, of course, that the possibility of either the Republic or the Empire interfering directly is pretty low. Indeed. I'm sorry I can't be more help. No, you were a big help. Just being able to cross suspects off the list helps a lot. Oh, speaking of which, though, we'd like to ask you something else. Estelle and the Ambassador Cochran, uh, uh, asks Ambassador Cochran about Ren, Ren's parents. Harold, uh, Harold Hayworth, a merchant from Crossbell, hmm? I can't say it rings any bells. I'm sorry. He's never visited the embassy, at least. Darn! Well, thanks. Do remember the Crossbell sits directly between Erebonia and Calvert, however. You may want to inquire the Erebonian embassy as well. Okay, thanks, Ambassador. And thanks for being so open with us. Okay, so the Republic and the Empire border each other directly. I didn't realize that. I thought Liberal was like a buffer state between the two. But maybe Liberal's kind of like a le like locked in between them. But the but the, the borders of the Emp Empire and the Calvert Republic are much more expansive and they like line up further along. Like, interesting, interesting. I'll, I'd love to see a bigger map sometime. <laughs> You're quite welcome. Glad I could help. By the way, you said your name was Estelle Bright. You wouldn't happen to be the Brigadier General Bright's daughter. Oh, you know Dad! <laughs> of course. A rogue vanquisher of the Imperial Army and now the head of the Liverpool's Royal Army. I've heard he had a daughter, but didn't expect to meet you like this. Oh, uh, well, I'm just kind of an experienced newbie myself still. You're off to a good start then, I think. We at the Embassy have relied on the Guild a number of times in the past. Should the time come again, I hope you'll aid us, Miss Bright. <laughs> well, the chance comes up, sure. Well, see you around. That was a very nice meeting. Mm. Throat's getting sore. Not so much. Not sure how much longer I can go on tonight. Estelle Bright, our embassy owes the guild greatly for your constant support. Should we have any jobs come up, I would be happy if you would be the one to take them on. Implying hint, hint, maybe we'll get a job offer in the future. Speaking of which, let's make sure to go visit the board, just in case something random pops up again, you know, as the game loves to just, you know, anytime you do anything that resembles a phase in time, it can immediately introduce new missions. Nope. Alright, now to the other embassy. Uh, uh. So it doesn't look like time has passed, everyone else seems to be here, but just in case, let's go check on Tita and Rena. Oh, they are gone. Maybe we should go hunt them down, see where they're off to now. Not Rena, by the way. Not Rena. It's Ren. Gosh darn it. Where did they go? Oh. Yeah, Fuma. We caught one of the birds. I didn't know you could do that. Where are they? Tita and Ren are gone. They just vanish. Hmm. Not gonna go in the castle. I'm just gonna look and see if they're out here or not. Nope. Oh, the fish seem to be swimming along quite cheerily. If I brought my fishing rod. Oh, that means there's a fishing spot here? Alright. Nope, oh, nope, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> hmm? So, you're the winners of the martial arts competition, right? Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's us. Thanks for your help back then. Hey, no worries. What brings you here today? 
You're here if you're here to see someone, I can certainly be arranged. Or did you just want to have a walk around the palace? That's okay, too. Uh, actually, I'm here on bracer business today. Which is to say, hello, Dan. Altus, it's been a while. Your Highness! Princess Claudia, we were not aware you'd returned. Huh, sorry to startle you two. I'm afraid I'm here on business, though. Estelle and I have some things in the castle to attend to. Could you let us pass, please? Uh, of course, Your Highness. By your command, milady. Ah, uh, wow! <laughs> Only slightly popular, isn't she? I think I'm starting to get why the Duke guy's so jealous. Well, here we go. Now I'm entering Brit mm, Lady Chloe and Estelle and her entourage. Open the gate! Fancy, fancy. Please come in. Huh, thank you, you two. Well, Estelle, welcome back to my house, as it were. Come on in. Ah, oh, thanks! But I want to see if we can go fishing! Aha! I bet I can fish here. Alright. Let's see. We have the new bamboo rod. What does that do? Most basic rod and tackle limits the usable types of bait, but can sometimes catch surprisingly big fish. Okay, so it's like an upgraded basic one. Dumpling. Uh, lakes and rivers made of plants and vegetables. Lakes and rivers. Lakes and rivers. So yeah, these are all going to be good for here because this is the lake. Hmm. Okay, it just doesn't like this. Alright, so it doesn't seem like this is a good one. Is this is this technically salt water? I didn't think it would be, but maybe it is. Nope. I right, finally caught something. A salmon. Okay. Liberal carp. And a dace. That's new. Okay. That'll be enough for now. Sadly disappointing how little the bamboo the bamboo didn't work at all. The castle is beautiful. Yes, it is. Um, where is why are Tita and Rena, or Ren, like at at all? Like, hello? Where'd they go? Aha! Ah, Estelle, the spinning wheel is really simple, but condens condenses a lot of different inventions into it. The person who created this is pretty incredible, huh? I want to invent something like this someday. Oh, I bet you will, Tita. And she's gotten started. Tita's always getting this weird look in her eyes when she sees a machine. Is she always like this? Sorry, that's pretty much a default setting. Aw, they're cute. I like that they're on their like little like play date or date or whatever. I think it's just adorable. They, they, they seem like a really good pair. Oh, hello again. Lord Ambassador Car uh, Cargan and Major Vander just returned. Aw, oh, perfect timing. Can we go in then? Sure. Welcome to the Herobodian Embassy. Do remember the embassy is Herobodian soil, so be careful, yeah? Well, we will be. Let's go in. Let's take a look at this one. Ooh, look how fancy this one is. This is quite the building. Wow. This place it definitely matches the Calvert Embassy in terms of fanciness. Grandiose yet powerful at the same time. A very imperial, if nothing else. Hmm, it is staged upon that which the Empire can parade its influence and power. Alas, the actors are, are, are unequal in the set dressing. You realize Lord Card uh, Cargan would, uh, would hit the roof if he heard you say that. I know who this guy is. He's the Charger. Yeah. Ah, oh, my bosom companion. It's been an age. Are you well, dear Mueller? It would be better if I could cut you in half and be done with it. I told you, I get it again to ensure we were constantly aware of your location and you... 
Ah, but it is tactful, tactful, ta uh, but it is a tactic in the war of love. Did you know absence make the heart grow fonder? Estelle Bright, you have my thanks. I can only imagine the trouble this idiot's been causing you. Ha, <laughs> actually, he hasn't been too bad, I guess. He's been really well-mannered, comparatively. Well, ignoring the lunatic. I presume you have business here at the embassy. Yes, sir. We would like to speak to the ambassador. Estelle explained the desire to meet the ambassador concerning the letter. The letter, that right. I've been somewhat concerned myself, but I'm surprised the guild is acting. This is a request from Brigadier General Bright in the Royal Army, I take it? Well, technically, yes, but we're trying to investigate it as naturally as we can, you know? Nobody's guilty till proven, that kind of thing. Hmm, commendable mindset, no doubt why he chose you. Very well, I shall introduce you to Lord Ambassador Cargan. I suspect you'll find it easier to gain his trust if I do introductions as opposed to a certain someone. Really? Thanks, Mueller. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, wait, you really have to- you really have so little faith in me. You, uh, thought we had faith in you for this? You introduced us. He'd probably want us kicked out. Uh, sorry, Oliver. Ah, uh, the sting of being forsaken. The sting of truth, maybe. Lord, uh, Cra uh, Kragan. I keep saying his name differently, but I can't decide how I like it. Cra- uh, Krag- Kragan. Krag- Kragna- Kragnia- Nya- Kragnia. Alright, the GH might be silent, so... Krag- Kragna? Is in his office on the second floor. I shall go right now to your arrival. Give me a moment. We'll wait then. <sighs> okay, let's go look around a little if we can. Basic rooms. Oh, hey, it's been a while, Oliver. Are those your guests? Indeed, one could call them guests, but more inclined to think of them as my soulmates. Our days spent together have been tender, so sweet, I feel merely called to this... The forced love doesn't des it does a disservice to our bond. Is that not so, Estelle? My... Wait, does that mean you've dumped Mueller? My... My head hurts. I think I'm starting to understand Mueller's suffering. So, like, she's under the impression that they actually... I wonder who Oliver's really targeting. Why do you think? Is Mueller still his one and only, or has he moved on to greener pastures? Why, you need only ask. No, thanks! I think Oliver just hits on anyone. I honestly think if he found someone who actually, like, returned, the, like, the affections, he would actually just disappear. All the books in this room were published in liberal. To learn about someone's nation, start with their culture. You're free to read them, but please put them back where you found them once you're done. Is that gonna be another book series in here? Uh... The uh, Carnelia. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna read these to myself as well. I'm, I... Carnelia sounds familiar, so that might have technically been in the first game. Alright, I'm gonna read this to myself and I'll let you know. Okay, that was actually really cool. So... I think I did read a part of that one, but only like one chapter. It's like a kind of a Western mystery of a guy who's being a courier, uh, and he gets helped by a sister who seems to be one of those like roaming warrior priests potentially, and he's being hunted by like essentially mafia-style aristocrats and trying to because he's transporting it turns out an artifact and. It gets insane, there's lots of fights, lots of explosions, a random teleportation. It's pretty cool. Very, very in in interesting. Very long, but very well involved. I, I enjoyed it immensely. That was very, very well done. I think I like the concept of the Blue Knight more, but I liked the writing and the delivery of Carnelia, Sister Carnelia more, as far as like story composition. The closest imperial city to liberal borders a place called Parm. Actually from there, by the way. Gerald. It's close to Bose, which makes it convenient to return home for visits. Of course, it's not so convenient to visit the imperial capital from there. There aren't any publicly scheduled liners to, in Erebonia, so I have to switch over to the railway system. Hey, Oliver. I heard you went to Hot Springs. I'm so envious. I've been working until I'm dead on my feet getting ready for the signing ceremony. 
All right, now let's go and meet the ambassador. So this is the office. Wow. Hmm, indeed. Shall we make our grand entrance and shock the ambassador into silence? Mila can totally cut you in half, you know. I apologize for the wait. Lord Car uh, Carg uh, Cargan will see you now. Let's go then. I feel like we've met him before as well. Welcome to our body and embassy guests. I am Lord David Cargan, the duly appointed ambassador and voice of the Empire in this land. Um, I was still afraid of the Bracers Guild. Zen Vathak, also of the Guild. I'm Clogan's second year student in the Janus Royal Academy and assistant to the Bracers. And I am the servant of love and peace, Oliver Leinheim. Ugh, you. I'd heard you'd gone missing in Elmo Village. Try not to worry Mueller further, Oliver. Or me, for that matter. Such a strict dressing down, much more, and I'll have lost my jacket. Hmm, setting that aside. You are here to inquire about the threatening letter, yes? What do you want to know? Okay, I'll be direct, sir. Do you have any idea who might be behind the letter? Is there anyone in the Empire who might oppose the signing of the pact? My, you are direct, young Bracer. I appreciate that. I can tell you truthfully, however, I can think of no such person. His Majesty is very happy with the pact as it stands, in fact. And no one within the Empire would be foolish enough to gainsay his leadership in such a matter, of course. Uh, yeah, I bet. So you think I'd still work as someone outside the Empire, then? What other answer could there be? If you want my opinion, it is the opposition party and Calvert behind all this. Some silly ploy to make the president look bad, no doubt. Opposition! Doing whatever it pleases. This is the perfect example of the fallacies of the mob rule. So he's saying, essentially, the Calvert Republic, as a republic, is essentially a, a at least a form of democracy. So he, and he's very much like, what a flawed system. Huh, I have to question that, uh, your lordship. Don't get me wrong, our major political parties basically beat each other over the head anytime they can, but even if the pact fell apart due to this, I don't think anyone could blame it on President Rocksmith. Details. You think the mob thinks like that? Puh! All I can say for certain is that the person issuing these threats cannot be from our empire. That should be more than enough assurance for you. Well, uh... Excuse me, Lord Cargan. May I ask what Chancellor Ober uh, Orbono's opinion of the non-aggression pact is? Osborne's Os Osborna, Osborne. Yeah, I think it's just supposed to be Osborne. What? Hmm. Hmm. Flawless repose, Clo. Uh, who? The highest appointed official in our most glorious and august imperial government, the Blood and Iron Chancellor, uh, Goliath Osborne. His nickname comes from his personal motto, Our nation's peace must be built on the foundation of blood and iron. He has overseen the expansion of the rail systems, as well as the annexation of several smaller states on our borders through less than diplomatic means. Annex? Wait, you mean he's... Oliver! How could you criticize your empire's chancellor? Oh, but Devil, how was I criticizing? I was simply stating facts. But come now, it wouldn't hurt to be a bit more competitive, co cooperative, no? We've already spoken with lovely Ambassador Cochrane over at the Calver Calverdian Embassy. She was quite helpful, you see. What? Why, if we don't help these people now, it'll give them the cause to doubt the character of Arabonia. That would be a tragedy, wouldn't you agree? Mm. My lord Car uh, Cargan, there's no need to keep information related to this hidden. May I humbly suggest that being open in this case will not present a problem? You have a point, Mueller. Very well. To answer your question, Miss Chancellor Osborne, His Majesty, is most receptive to this pact. In fact, I hear he's actually the one who suggested His Majesty should sign it. Really? Hmm. Not because he's looking forward to getting the engine, right? No. Apparently he recommended it to his majesty before any mention of the engine. 
If anything, I'm glad there's harmony at home over this pact. There's been no pressure for us to negotiate. Okay, that is interesting. Now, this general dude, he might be influenced by uh, um, Ouroboros. It, can, it sounds like he's at least, like... He's, he's of a similar mind to the Colonel, and Ouroboros targeted the Colonel because of his mindset, so perhaps... Um, perhaps this guy is also, uh, kind of agreeing in that sense as well. Hmm. Hate to say it, Estelle, but it's looking like there really isn't any chance of someone from the Empire. Yeah, it looks that way. Ambassador, thanks a lot for answering our questions. Hmm, see? It is as I said. If you're looking to the guilty party, you should look elsewhere. Oh, but, uh, one sec. If you don't mind, we have one more question. Estelle asked Lord Car uh, Cargna about Ren's parents. Yeah, it's a most pitiable situation, the separation of a child from her parents. Imperial traders do visit the embassy at times, but a merchant from Crossbell? I do not recall such a man, no. Are you familiar with S. Haythor Hay Hayward, Mueller? No, never heard of the man either. Really? Ah, This is starting to look kind of grim. To search at once for both the blackmailer and the lost child's parents, so it's most trying. It may seem trite, but I do wish you luck, young lady. Ah, uh, thanks, Mr. Uh, Lord Kerrigan. Would you allow me to show you to the gate, then? Alright, but that's, I think, where we're going to end for now. I'm sure there's more changes to be done, but my voice is going to give out. I know I cut out a lot, so I hope this video wasn't too short, but knowing my ability to gauge such things, I doubt that's the case. But I'll talk to some people on my way out. We'll head out, go find Tita and Ren if they have moved again, and then uh, we just have the liberal news and the, the castle, so... Yeah, that should be nice and fun and interesting. And we also, of course, have to go check and make sure that another surprise mission hasn't popped up. But we'll get to that, of course, when we get to it. Thank you so much for being here today. Hope you enjoyed playing with me. I really enjoyed being able to share this with you. And, of course, I'm enjoying the story. It's so, so well done. And while I had to cut out all the reading of the books, those books were really inspired. Like, again, it's just a testament to just how much work was put into this series that even, like, side novels that are just essentially Easter eggs in the books, in, in the stories, are just here. They're just out there, presented by the staff or whoever wrote this, like, world into existence. It just, oh yeah, I'm just gonna make some short stories, just for flavor. Just flavor. That's amazing. But, I digress. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey, and I look forward to being able to explore this more. And I, I'm also excited to continue this series beyond this chapter, going to three, and then uh, the, the, the myriad of new stories, including some of the brand new ones that are literally being published as we speak, which is very exciting. Anyway, I'm enough. That's enough for now. Thank you so much for joining me today. And until next video, watch me. I've seen me next. I'll see you there.